Starbies and welcome back to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Belinda Strana. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Don't forget to please subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that anytime I upload videos, you will be the first person to be notified to my returning subscribers, to those people that share my videos, leave commentaries, and also educate, educate each and every one of us. You guys are the real MVP. All right, lovelies, let's dive into today's video. So lovelies, I came across this video on my For You page on TikTok and I thought to share with you, I have actually made something like this, which I said that I was going to look for more videos to actually, you know, put up here concerning, you know, black Americans relating to maybe evil part of, you know, Nigeria and all of that. And I was able to put up some of those videos. I'm just going to roll it as well as other videos I was able to put together. Please leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think. And please do not forget that we do not support any form of bullying and harassment. We're just here for educational and informative purposes. All right, lovelies, let's dive into it. In a previous video, I explained that the majority of our enslaved African ancestors brought into the United States were not from modern day Nigeria. There were many from modern day Nigeria, but they weren't the majority. Still, 60% of African Americans do have a lineage that points back to modern day Nigeria. Our ancestors were being moved around from location to location through intra-trading. But also in 1807, Britain abolished the slave trade in the British Empire. And in 1808, the U.S. Congress banned importing enslaved Africans, but they didn't stop domestic trade of enslaved Africans. So enslavers focused on breeding. They actually had breeding camps in Virginia. And many of our ancestors in Virginia were Igbo. So, for example, if they took one Igbo man and forced him to breed or procreate with 60 African women of different ethnicities and they each had a child, each of those 60 children would have Igbo DNA. This is where the overrepresentation comes from. A couple of folks requested that I do a video on Igbo landing, so here we go. In 1803, a group of 75 enslaved Igbo were brought to Savannah, Georgia and sold for about $100 each. Then they were put back onto a ship that was supposed to sail to St. Simon's Island. But on the way, they rebelled, took over the ship, threw enslavers overboard, and some of the enslavers drowned. When they reached land, they walked right into Dunbar Creek. Some say they were led by a chief. They drowned themselves in defiance of slavery. And there's an actual eyewitness account by a local overseer from another plantation. This true story has influenced a number of African American folk tales, including stories about Africans that can walk on water or fly back home to Africa. Representatives from Igbo land actually visited this site and declared it sacred. Many people from the local community still will not fish there because they don't want to disturb the ancestors. What bothers me the most about people that deny the transatlantic slave trade isn't that so much that they deny it is that they genuinely believe the only evidence or stories about the transatlantic slave trade come from white people it's a reckless disregard for the stories that our ancestors literally told about their lives and what happened to them. We have numerous accounts, Phyllis Wheatley, Alada Equiano, Kujo Lewis, it goes on and on. If you don't wanna believe it happened, you're gonna have to come up with something better than it came from white people because our ancestors told us. Some Igbo news for your ass. So Harriet Tubman is a part of Igbo American history. This is why. Harriet Tubman was born in Maryland, Dorchester County. Look up Maryland and Igbos. After you do that, you'll realize Harriet Tubman was an Igbo slave descendant with no American rights, so she wasn't American, so what was she? She was Igbo. You're welcome. Harriet <laughs> Tubman history, Igbo Quenu, Igbo Quezi. You're welcome. All right, so a lot of y'all are upset about why I feel like black Americans are Igbo. So I'm a black American, okay? I'm a black American. I'm from the United States. My ancestors were taken to the 13 colonies as slaves. I'm a slave descendant. Of the slave descendants that were taken to the United States, they were taken here and bred here 
all up and down the 13 colonies in the late 1300s. I mean, late 1700s, all right? That's what this map looks like right now. You have a lot more states in the 2000s than you did in the 1700s. So when I tell you that the slaves were taken from Virginia and bred all over the place, that's what I mean. We were Wolof, Fulani, Yoruba, Ibibio, Iwe, Fawn, Ashanti, <laughs> Congo, <laughs> Angolese. We were Congolese. We were a lot of things, but we were mainly Igbo. So all of these minor tribes got mixed in with the Igbo slaves to make the bloodline that is the black American from then. So to continue what I was saying about Igbo history on this page, uh, the enslavement of the Igbos began here, along with the breeding of the Igbo slaves. Now, even though they did collect a number of slaves from other areas of Africa, the main genome that they had were the Igbo people. And I'm not talking about kingdoms or countries. I'm saying the kinds of people that the Americans took, particularly to Virginia. As they gained land from the natives, they then would plant the Igbos that they bred in the new plantations. So Tennessee, before it was a state, it was a territory that belonged to the natives. They won that land, planted plantations along with more slaves. They didn't have the ability to constantly get more ships to go back to Africa because that created more and more problems with the competitive nations that also had slaves, like Spain, like France. So it made more sense to breed them in mass here and keep them away from everyone else. So as they gained land, they planted new slaves. All right, we have another episode from the Big Book of Igbo. So, to get familiar with how you can look into Igbo history is you want to look up the Bight of Benin, the Bight of Biafra, and the Gold Coast. These places had the most Igbo slaves that took this track to America, straight to where present-day Virginia and the 13 colonies was soon to be. Okay, so Europe came down into Africa with their strong naval military and provided protection for a lot of other European countries to be able to travel through the British Triangle, okay? Britain had all this on lock defensively. Britain also was responsible for breeding the Igbos here. Now the Spanish and the French, they took over the islands and the Portuguese went straight down to Brazil. And they had a strong connection to Angola, well, what is gonna be present day Angola which back then was called Luanda. You're gonna to wanna to look that up too. But these are a lot of important names. And so part two is gonna focus on this particular area. The reason why I didn't draw any countries or borders in here is because technically, not a lot of that stuff was set in stone at the time. So imagine that there are a lot of different ethnic groups and tribes that live in this area. As the threat of enslavement increases, they go for the most vulnerable. Not the weakest, but the most vulnerable. So if you didn't live in a protected city state with its own military, it was a good chance that you got swept up into enslavement. They also didn't have prisons. So instead of imprisoning you, they sold you into slavery. They also didn't know how to settle too many disputes that were serious. So that also ended up in enslavement. And a lot of different tribes were enslaving minor tribes and vulnerable tribes only to save their own ass. So the Igbos caught the brunt of this for the most part because they were the farmers and the agricultural sect of this area. Okay, part three in the big book of Igbo today is gonna be about these dash lines and their connection to the Gold Coast, Bida Benin, Bida Biafra, and the United States. So these dash lines took about three months to complete. So that ship ride is very long, it's very extreme, and the slaves were starved most of the time. So they died within a matter of months, sometimes weeks, sometimes a year, but the infection, the disease, and the harsh conditions killed so many slaves. So to prevent them from losing the slaves on these ship rides this far, they started breeding the slaves here and created the intra-American slave trade where they would have the babies in these particular areas and sell the babies so that they didn't have to worry about not only getting adults that were more rebellious, they would have a baby that you could simply recreate and recreate, rinse and repeat. And this is how the population expanded from the Igbo base to all the other slaves that weren't minor tribes, but small so in number. Lovely. I made a video, you know, some time ago concerning this Igbo landing, which I have been trying my possible best to look for, you know, the story, to actually look for the historical background of Igbo landing though during the course of a video which i actually put a commentary it was just a story that was told by my own grandfather my own grandfather told me the story of 
the Igbo landing where he talked about how these people, these, you know, colonizers, you know, they decided to go down to far away in Africa and uh, they decided to colonize these people, you know, the way they do it and enslave so many of them. So at the cause of, you know, crossing the road of no return, that is a place that, that, is, called, called, that is called a road of no return. So when this Igbo people, I think it's about 70 something or 70 something thousand Igbo people, you know, were enslaved and put in the shape on their way. They rebelled against the people that enslaved them. When they rebelled against them, they unalived them, you know, they unalived their masters. Let me just use the word, you know, that enslaved them on, on that ship which was taken you know somewhere in i think like atlanta or georgia or somewhere down in america and all of that and i think there is a place that is called evil landing somewhere in america as well so my grandfather told me their story and uh, he talked about how uh when they got to the middle of the ocean these enslaved people rebelled against their slave masters you know they unalive them after which they unalive them they decided that they were not going to get to the destination at which they have been taken to because they in that part of evil they don't you know they don't really uh, they, they are not the kind of people that they can easily get capture like that so because of that they decided that they were going to drown themselves they were all, you know, covered by and blindfolded, you know, chained and all of that with their wives and children and, you know, how it is. So they decided that they were going to jump inside this said river to drown themselves because they do not want to go to another man's land and uh, get enslaved and all of that. So once it led to the other, they jumped into it, joined themselves. That's why there's this image that have been circulating all over social media. Just go to maybe Google or something, type evil landing. You will see the way at which, you know, they'll bring out some images of these blindfolded people. You know, there is even a festival that is called evil landing festival somewhere there in evil land. So like, it's just a story that my grandfather told me. But why, why I got confused with the stories is the fact that there is a sister that I stitched her video talking about how there was nothing like a ship, that like there were no ship at all. And this actually got me confused. If my grandfather was talking about how, you know, the enslaved people, why is it that the sister is not talking about like the sister was like there were no slaves from africa and there were no ship because some researchers you know have to go deep inside the oceans try to look for the ships and that there was nothing found and uh, this sister was just you know not her but a book that she was just showing just the way at which this brother is showing a book it was stated that there was nothing like a ship no but like there were no slaves from africa and all of that that the the people that they were enslaved were the people like the the real indigenous people that was just the people that was enslaved there was nothing like you know slave ships and all of that this is where all my confusion because the what the story the story at which my you know grandfather told me it's not different than I am someone that's really love, you know, clarification. That's why anytime I, I bring up some historical fact here, I used to say that you guys should correct me if I am wrong because I'm someone that is very open to know, open to get educated because I am someone that actually love history. And another thing I also want to make, you know, put put up here is the is this um Biafra of a thing, which this even today like the the way i'm talking to you guys that's what they call biafra in in evil land and my mom is like that it's as if they're advocating for biafra land in evil land and this part of biafra people they have heritage with the israelites my mom usually said that they are the true choosing israel people like they are the israelites the way at which they worship you know the way at which they, they serve god cover their hair with white veils and all of that go to the mountains too this is the same way this part of their front Igbo people does like they like they worship god the way at which israel people does and they are black people 
and like all these things like this is just confusing to me and when i i i told the story about my grandfather's story about the evil and so some, some so many people were like okay i should just make more of the video or ask questions though my grandfather is late now <laughs> so and i was so happy to like come across these videos talking about both the evil landing talking about the biafra which is still in book is something that they are still trying to see if they can have their own their own you know their own Igbo biafra you know um israelite thing in their own nation so anyway love this when i saw this video i decided to just bring it up here because who knows we might actually get the answers that we've been all looking for just leave me your own thoughts in the comment section of what you think of this video please if you know of heard something you know relating to this historical fact about you know Igbo landing uh biafra and all of that just leave it in the comment section because i really want to be clear and i want to know all right lovelies i will see you when i upload Dear the girl, next if one. you try to click on the subscription button like this video share leave your thoughts and i will see you lovelies when i upload the next one